Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today's episode reads like a movie script. Let me start out for you. During the night of January 4th to 5th, 1866, along the Texas-Mexico border, an irregular force of about 125 volunteers composed of the 118th U.S. Colored Infantry and ex-Confederate soldiers crossed the Rio Grande River on an English schooner and landed in Mexico. They moved inland towards the town of Baghdad, where an unsuspecting 200-man garrison of Austrian troops sent by French Emperor Napoleon III threatened U.S. sovereignty. Wow, that's the beginning of this story. And it's an account that was told about this UN, U.S. incursion into French-occupied Mexico. And this account comes from the man who led the strike force. He's pictured here. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Isaac D. Davis. And he was the commander of the 118th U.S. Colored Infantry. He was 25 years old when this event happened. He was born and raised in Cecil County, Maryland, and began his military service in 1861 as a corporal in the 5th Maryland Infantry. During that time, he rose to the commissary sergeant and left the regiment in 1864 to accept a captain's commission in the newly formed 118th. In July 1865, the war is over for a couple months. He advanced to lieutenant colonel of the regiment. The 118th and a number of other U.S. colored infantry regiments were sent to Texas along that Mexican border because of those threats to our nation's sovereignty by the French who had come into Mexico and propped up a dictator, Maximilian, and were prepared to possibly do some damage in America. Abraham Lincoln and then Andrew Johnson had to deal with this problem. And this account is fascinating. And I want to read the whole thing to you. Uh, I want to mention some names now that you're going to hear in the account, just to give you context. And if you want to think about the movie script and the movie metaphor, here's the cast. It includes Emperor Maximilian I of Mexico, Mexican General Mariano Escobedo, U.S. Major Generals Phil Sheridan and Godfrey Wetzel, Confederate General Edmund Kirby Smith, and President Grover Cleveland. This account takes place in 1866, as I mentioned, but it was written by Lieutenant Colonel Davis in 1896. So we're talking 30 years after the actual event. So let's get to the reading of this account. And it's titled, He Invaded Mexico, a stirring episode in the career of Colonel I.D. Davis of Elkton, Maryland. Here we go. Colonel I.D. Davis, now cashier of the Second National Bank of Elkton, Maryland, has the distinction of having commanded the only United States troops which crossed into Mexico to drive out the French who were upholding the Emperor Maximilian. Colonel Davis says, quote, In the fall of 1865, I commanded the post of Clarksville at the mouth of the Rio Grande River in the state of Texas, being a part of the army under General Sheridan, stationed along the Mexican border pending negotiations for the evacuation of Mexico by the French. The troops occupied that line from June 1865 until January 1866 with no indication on the part of the Mexican Maximilian that the demands of the United States would be complied with. The maintenance of this force, about 30,000 men, was a great expense to the government and the object to be attained seemed as far off 
as at the beginning of the negotiations to expel the French from Mexico. All were heartily tired of this inactivity and anxious to strike a blow for the liberation of Mexico and the vindication of the Monroe Doctrine. With the knowledge of this feeling on the part of all the officers, from General Sheridan down, I resolved to take the initial step toward bringing matters to a decisive focus. I had no official orders for what I did, but it was done with the full knowledge of General Wetzel, the Corps commander. On the night of January 4th, 1866, I crossed the Rio Grande River in an English schooner with 125 men composed of volunteers from my own troops and some ex-Confederates of Kirby Smith's command. I surprised and captured the forts at Baghdad with 200 Austrian infantry and four pieces of artillery and confined the prisoners in the warehouses in the town. At daylight on the morning of the 5th, the French gunboat Antonio arrived from up the river and opened fire on us, but I engaged her with my captured cannon, disabled her, and drove her off. Three French men of war were offshore in the Gulf, and daylight showed that they had steam up and ports open ready for action. After the Antonio retreated, these three ships all opened on me with shell, but their gunnery was bad, and they did me no harm. Seeing this, they attempted to land a force in small boats, but we drove them back and held the town. Next day, the 6th, General Escobedo, the liberal officer of the Republican Party of Mexico, arrived, and I turned the town over to him, recrossed the river, and reported to General Wetzel. Within a month from that time, our government received notice that the French troops would be withdrawn, and I claim that it was the direct effect of my invasion that brought this prompt result. In this engagement, federal and Confederate troops fought side by side. They met a force double their own number, composed of the flower of European soldiers, and not only defeated them, but captured and disarmed them. The audacity of the enterprise and the prompt evacuation of Mexico by the French afterward shows that the slow process of diplomatic negotiation is not suited to all cases, and if our government would at once begin to establish a military camp along the Canadian border, it would work quicker on John Bull than any commission Mr. Cleveland could appoint. So that's the story, and Lieutenant Colonel Davis is sticking to it. Just to elaborate a little bit more, it was less than a month after Davis's troops captured Baghdad that Napoleon III announced a staged withdrawal of French troops from Mexico that would occur over a period of about a year and a half. As I mentioned, Davis told that story in 1896. He lived a good long life, uh, not, not, not dying until 1920. So his story is a pretty impressive one, and I haven't found an account similar to it. So there you have it, the story of Lieutenant Colonel Davis of the 118th U.S. Colored Infantry and the incursion from Texas across the Rio Grande into Baghdad, Mexico. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.